Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order. I am Celtic Templar, and today y'all, for this video, we're actually going to be talking about the history on the many flags of the Confederacy. Now, whenever I hear people start talking about the Confederate flag, they automatically start saying, It's a racist symbol! Here's the thing, I've made a video for y'all, so that way y'all can understand, before y'all start saying idiot crap like that, Maybe y'all should check out my last video on this subject when I talk about how the Confederate flag isn't a racist symbol. So, yeah. Now, also, when it comes down to it, when many people will understand the Confederate flag, they automatically just think it's this flag here. Well, no. It's not just this flag. In fact, this is the most common Confederate flag anyone thinks of. However, this is the Confederate Navy Jack. In other words, this was used on naval ships. And the fact is, in a major form, the Confederate flag had different variations, and as which, we could not just talk about, well, the national flag or the battle flags, but as well the regiment flags, and as well the state's flags that were used in the American Civil War. In fact, when I was young, I actually wore this a couple of times, and here's the thing. I never got attacked, I never... whatsoever. That's because I actually treated people with equality the way my mother taught me. And the fact is, I used to believe that these were the only five flags in the Confederate Army. That was until I looked up further information about it a couple of years after, I believe, I was in middle school, I believe. So, yeah. Now, what are the five major flags of the Confederate military? Well, if now you all understand, the first one would be the first national flag of the Confederate military, which would be known as the Stars and Bars. The Stars and Bars were, well, as looks. Which, everyone always thinks of the Stars and Bars as this, but no, this is not the Stars and Bars. This is the Confederate battle flag. This is the Stars and Bars, which was the first Confederate national flag. It was used by the Confederate forces, especially as a national flag, not a battle flag. The only time I ever hear it ever being used as a battle flag was somewhere during the first years of the war. In fact, this flag was used as the national flag of the Confederacy from 1861 to 1863. For obvious reasons, it was accidentally mistaken for, well, uh, the Union flag. Especially from far away and especially in the smoky battlefield. Now people would automatically say, but then this looks nothing like the Union flag. Here's the thing, I'll put this one here, and this union here, and here's the thing, you put these at a distance, these look near identically the same. So, yeah. Uh, but originally, it, the, well, Stars and Bars first started with seven stars, then it moved to nine stars in May to July of 1861, then it was to 11 in July from, to November in 1861, and then 13 in 1863. So, yeah. So, many people do want to ask, so far, why'd they change the star so many times? Well, to the major form is, uh, I want to put this out here, the only amount of states that actually joined the Confederacy were 11, not 13. Many people actually get this kind of mistaken. Reason being is because the fact is of rebellions that actually happened because of the Union, but I guess I'll have that for another time. But, yes. This was the Stars and Bars. The second Confederate uh, national flag would be this, the Stainless Banner. The Stainless Banner, well, was the Stainless Banner. It was a white flag with a Confederate flag, battle flag, right on there. This was used from 1863 to 1865. And the fact is, there were actually this one, and then there was this one. Uh, one that was, was stated to have been uh, captured at the Battle of... Uh, Painesville, Painesville, I believe, and as well, there's also this one that was actually at Fort Fisher. And the reason being why these are different is because these two on the bottom are because they were actually made by Scottish immigrants. In fact, Scotsmen actually created this flag off of their old, well, uh, St. Andrew's Cross flag, which many people actually don't realize on the influence of the battle flag. But I'll get to that very soon. But why did they go with this banner design? Well, kind of obvious. Uh, just like with the national flag, if you have this up in the middle of the air, this could be confused for a Union flag. However, they actually 
had to switch out of this flag for one major reason. If there's no wind blowing, guess what? This looks like a white flag of surrender. Which is why the Confederacy later switched to the blood stain banner in 1865. However, by that point in time, the war was about at its end. Now, these were just national flags, so maybe you would ask, Simbar, if these were national flags, then what about the battle flags? Well, there were different variations, which we will get to very soon. But, in such, the national flags of the Confederacy were just like this. And the fact is, there were three national flags of the Confederate military. However, whenever we hear about other flags, like such as, well, as I showed on the t-shirt, there are two of them that we see, such as... Ah, this one, and this one. This is the Na Confederate Navy flag. This is the Confederate battle flag. In other words, one flag was meant for the infantry, the other one was, or uh, land forces, and the other one was meant for the said naval forces. Which people kind of don't realize that until it's too late and they accidentally don't know the difference. But, yeah. Now, let's also get into the state's flags. Now, Many people actually automatically start saying that we should learn more about the Confederate battle flag. Well, we should also learn about the state's flags that were flown in those battles. Such as, well, with first with Alabama, that of which has a two-sided version. I believe it switched later on down the line, I'm not certain. Uh, but you can tell why the Confederates actually used this design for one major reason. This was actually based on the states of Alabama, in which the state itself designed it like this, stating the following, independent now and forever, mainly stating that they were not wanting to go back to the Union. And the fact is, that's kind of obvious, because Alabama suffered heavy taxation from the Union, and this is a good example why they were wanting to be independent from the said, well, Union military forces. Of course, then we go to Arkansas, which doesn't have its own battle flag or state flag, because one, it wasn't exactly recognized by the Union design. And the fact is, the majority of Arkansanians, I guess that's the correct way I can pronounce y'all, actually used a Confederate battle flag, but with their, uh, well, Arkansas on it. So, yeah, that's kind of what many states actually did, and especially in the matter of warfare. Then there's also this flag of Florida, which actually is kind of cool, actually. Uh, which, I'm not knowing, and uh, here's the thing, I'm not big on, uh, modern flags of the, uh, modern United States and all that, because after what happened with Mississippi, but, yeah. But then there is also this flag of Georgia. The flag of Georgia actually had different variations. Some, originally it was blue, but then they switched to a red background, not to be mistaken for Union forces, especially after the Battle of, uh, Bull Run, for example. So, they actually switched it around. However, there are many Georgian divisions and regiments that actually use the Confederate national flag, such as the Harps Division, as it was named, because of the harp that was on the battle flag. This flag would be, well, seen in the movie Gods and Generals, especially at the Battle of Fredericksburg. We see Irishmen actually having, holding the flag, as they were stated to have done so. Now then, there's also going down to Louisiana. Now, we always get in tune to this design of Louisiana's flag. Well, here's the thing. The Louisiana flag that was used by those forces in that time was this. I don't know what this is. I literally try and look up as much as I could about this. But apparently, it was influenced by Texas Navy. That's right. This was influenced by the Texas Navy. So they designed this design so perfectly to it. However, the Texas naval flag looked like an American flag, but with one big star. So, what the Louisiana na military did, they just designed this, which kind of actually... I kind of like it, actually. I'll go, although, here is one major state that actually nearly got a Confederate flag into the, uh, like, it was on the voting, it was on the voting poll to replace the, the flag of Mississippi. And guess what? This flag nearly became part of the said New Mississippi design state flag. And that was this. This is a Confederate flag, and it was accidentally mistaken for the said, uh, 
normal flag. Because pretty much when people automatically see a flag, they automatically see a hate symbol. And here's the thing, they didn't see a hate symbol, they just saw what looked like a Texas knockoff. Uh, this is actually a Mississippi flag that was flown by the Mississippi Corps. They flew this in uh, the type of form of their state, well, tree. Now, the reason of the Lone Star, I am told, is also because of Texas for some weird reason. I don't know why, but apparently Texas influenced a lot of people. However, some historians also state this might be based off of the Bonnie Blue flag, which is a blue background with a white star. And this is actually also nearly uh, mistaken for a Texas Bonnie Blue flag or the Somali flag, apparently. Which, I don't know how those get... All confused. I really don't know. Uh, but then there is actually this flag. This flag was actually flown by North Carolina. And the fact is, it actually gives us the date when it first fought against the Great Britain, and now when it's fighting against the Union. In fact, I always call this, like, literally, every time I take a look at this, these are all mostly Texas knockoffs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, North Carolina, if you heard that. Uh, but it looks, it looks to me, it looks like a Texas flag. I'm sorry, it looks like a Texas flag to me. It, it just does. Because one, I think Texas actually influenced a lot more states than people think. Because one, it was the biggest state that fl actually left the Union. And to the major fact, it really didn't want to be part of the Union. Uh, but we'll get to that very soon. Then there's also South Carolina, which still has its modern day state flag today. However, there were different variations. Sometimes even had a... Uh, white spiral loop design between the moon and the palm tree. Apparently, I'm told it's stated in different words, uh, liberty or death or uh, long live liberty. There are different variations. Then there is also the Tennessee flag like this, which, yes, this is a Tennessee flag, and which I'm, I'd rather like to see it like this rather than whatever happened here. I don't know what happened to Tennessee. I really don't. <laughs> Uh, but then let's go to my home state of Texas. Texas used a random, I mean, like, literally, we used a uh, random amount of sort of flags. It's uh, kind of complicated. Because, um, one, we used the Texas, net, our Texas flag like we used. However, there are many accounts of them also, of us using, uh, well, different variations of uh, flags such as ones that we used during the Texas Revolution. Now, there are some of them, like this one, that was said, victory or death. This was used by Texas uh, soldiers in the war, I'm told. So, there are pretty much a lot of them. There's also the come and take it, that of which everyone knows of. And yes, this was used by Texans as well. Then there's also, well, this is the Bonnie Boo flag I was telling you about, which had the, uh, well, letters of Texas around it. Then there's also this design of flag of Texas. Yes, this was a Texas flag inspired by the stars and bars, and we just put the one star in there to represent Texas independence forever. Uh, but yeah, here's a good example on the Texas flag being used. In fact, there are letters on it and such. This is how they actually put their divisions. They were everywhere, so yeah. Now, then there's also... The Magnolia Rangers, that of which from the Magnolia Guard. The Magnolia Rangers were a group of Confederates, that of which actually, well, uh, transferred from the Magnolia Guard off of the, well, Magnolia trees here in Texas. They were named after that, after the uh, infamous, they actually put Magnolia in their said hats. Kind of like some other Texas divisions, like the Yellow Rose Division, and as well, one of my favorites, the Blue Bonnet Brigade or Blue Bonnet Division, as they were also nicknamed. So, but I think I'll have to talk about those guys some other time, especially for Texas History Month. So, yeah. But, uh, these guys actually were an outfit of, I want to say, cavalrymen, but some historians state that they were infantry. There are different variations, so it's hard to say. But, yes, these guys would have actually used a flag like this. And, in fact, is... These guys fought bitterly to the very end, so yeah. Next, we also got this weird <laughs> contraption of a Confederate Texas flag, uh, which, honestly, I kind of like. I kind of like this. 
I don't know why. I kind of like this flag. Uh, but yeah, this was originally a design for the fact of unification or an alliance with the said confederacy. Now, the reason I'm getting into so many Texas flags is because Texas used a lot more than the rest of the confederacy did, which is weird to say the least. And then we also have uh, this flag, the Liberty or Death. Now, this was the infamous Texas flag. This was known as the Texas national flag for the new Texas. This was a white background, blue star with liberty or death. And the fact is, originally it was a white background with a blue star. However, just like with a stainless banner, it was accidentally mistaken for a flag of surrender. And the fact is, this flag is still viewed as Texas' symbol of independence to this very day. So yeah, many Texans to this day, we still use this flag a lot. Uh, then there's also this design of flag of independence. As I said, there are a lot of Texas flags that were used in the American Civil War. But, yeah. So, that's kind of weird, I know, but that's actually how Texas was. Uh, but then there is also some people who actually automatically ask, but simple are, why did Texas use so many flags? Simple! We were actually our own country for 10 years, and we really didn't want to be part of the Union. In fact, there were different groups of Texans who fought against the Union uh, occupation, uh, both peacefully and not peacefully. In fact, many times over, though, there was a major flag that was actually flown by every state in the Confederacy, and that would be this, the Don't Tread on Me. This flag is a good form of explanation. Now, many people would automatically say, I don't know, why, why would they fly that? Seriously, do you not understand the American Civil War? Well, I have to put this out here. The states fought for different reasons, but the major reasons were to the fact that they were fighting against a corrupt government, believing that it was, well, going against their rights as, well, statesmen. They were, going to, they were pretty much over taxation and all that. So, this is a good example to it. In fact, I think the first state that flew this during the American Civil War wasn't Texas, but I think it was South Carolina. Instead of uh, raising up the South Carolina flag, they actually flown this flag when they first seceded from the Union. In fact, South Carolina was the first to nobly take the stand. Oh, God, I'm starting to quote the lines from the Bunny Boo flag song. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a video for y'all if y'all want to see it. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, this flag was flown by the South Carolinians, stating the following, that they are done with the taxation of the said states. And, well, they were kind of, well, the inspiration to many other states that later join into a confederacy against a union government. So, yeah, but I'll get to them some other time. So, yeah. Now, let's now go to Virginia. And Virginia uses the same flag they are still using to this day. And the fact is, however, they did switch up the words a lot of times, such as death to the tyrant or not by the tyrant's hand we shall fall. There are different variations. So, yeah, don't get mad at me. There are different variations. So, <laughs> I don't know how many variations they had on that one flag alone. Sometimes they actually had a white background with a blue circle. Other times, it, but mainly by 1860s, I believe, I think they started to switch it to the blue background with the white circle because, one, it kind of confused people in the middle of the battle, and they saw a white flag, as I keep saying. So, yeah, that's a, my point to it. Okay, now let's go right to the said Confederate battle flag. Now, the battle flags are pretty much always in a square form. This way they could actually be used to, well, identify. Now, why did they design them? Simple. They designed them because of the fact of the conflict in the American Civil War. Now, when automatically when people see the battles in the American Civil War, they don't know how horrifying it was, especially during the First Battle of Manassas. Both the national flag for the Confederacy and the national flag for the United States were accidentally mixed up, and they could accidentally... Be, uh, well, uh, end up dealing with friendly fire. So the Confederacy ended up designing this design of battle flag, and this was actually the Army of Northern Virginia that actually used this flag the most. Meaning, uh, the army that well was commanded by General Robert E. Lee 
instead, especially, and had commanding forces underneath Hood and all that. In other words, any one of the commanders that reported to Robert E. Lee ended up having a battle flag like this. However, Texans use a random amount of sorts depending on their brigades and regiments and such. So it's uh, confusing, I know. But then there was also this design, which was used by, well, Forest Cavalry Corps, which was used from 1865 to, uh, from where I believe 1863 to 1865. So, yeah. Why is that one star missing? I think this was because of the fact that one of the states had surrendered to the Union entirely. I'm not certain if this is true or not. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I think it was because Forrest didn't i uh, appreciate one other state or whatever. I don't know. There was a weird version of this. However, then there is this battle flag, which is actually used by the Army Corps of the Trans-Mississippi. This was actually uh, <laughs> inspired by Scottish immigrants to the United States, or to the Confederate States of America that lived in the United States before the Civil War. And they designed this over their country of old Scotland. And you gotta admit, that's actually kind of nice looking. <laughs> okay, now let's get into Confederate naval flags. These have actually been used by certain regiments. Such as, for example, let's take a look at 1861 to 1863 with the Confederate uh, Navy Jack, which was this, which was accidentally mistaken for a Union naval flag a lot of times. So that's kind of why by 1863 they started to switch to this design of flag, the Confederate uh, naval flag, like naval jack. So yeah, you can see why the Confederacy had to switch. As well, there was also the uh, Confederate uh, ensign from 1861 to 1863, which was the Confederate national flag. Then there was actually this design of the stainless banner being used of the, well, the said... Uh, Confederate Navy ensign from 1863 to 1865 for one major reason. However, many people say, but Templar, wouldn't this later have to become a stainless banner? You would think so, but seeing the fact that ships sail and all that, I doubt that they needed to switch this. Uh, but what I am told is that there was actually this design on the CSS Atlanta. Major reason why this one's different from the stainless banner, it was slightly longer than that one. So, yeah. Then there was also the uh, CSS Cru uh, Curly, Crulo, I don't know how you pronounce that, so yeah, I'll just put it there, which had this nine-star navy design, and it kind of actually looked really cool, because this was on the paddle steamer, and this was actually pretty cool, so these were steamboats. And then there was also the 11-star insignia on the, he said, Confederate privateer Jefferson Davis, which was pretty nice also. So, yeah, they were technically using different variations of naval flags. However, as I said, these were accidentally mistaken for said Union flags by accident sometimes. Then there's also the 12-star Confederate insignia on the CSS Ellis, which was used from 1861 to 1862, which is kind of nice, actually. However, as I said, these stars and bar flags, these look near identical to Union flags, which is probably why they stopped using them. Although, then there was actually this flag used by <laughs> the captain known as William Leach of the CSS Seabird in 1862. This, I don't know why, this looks like a French flag to me. It looks like, literally, like, tell me this doesn't look like a French flag. I dare you. Uh, but then there was also this design on the CSS Tennessee, used by Admiral Franklin uh, Birchman, I believe. And the fact is, this design was also nearly mistaken for a Union flag. So, the Confederacy later switched to this design of a blank blue flag, which was used on the CSS Virginia, which is a pretty cool design. However, there is also another Confederate flag that was actually captured and never used in naval warfare, but actually was captured by General Sherman when it came to his Sherman's March, when he captured it at Savannah, Georgia, in 1864. This design actually, well, as we see, it has a blue star, a red star, and as well, the, the symbol, don't tread on me. So yeah, this is a good example that <laughs> they were actually trying to put there. 
Okay, now let's actually get some to some weird flag proposals. The reason I say flag proposals is because these ones are weird when I took a look at them in history. And honestly, they I don't know how I can explain it, but uh, yeah. Let's, let me just show you what I mean so that way you can understand. Uh, such as the first flag uh, proposal by uh, a, uh, what was it? A Bonand, I believe, a Bonand, uh, and from Savannah, Georgia, which, in fact, from what I'm told, this guy was actually Jewish descent, so he might have, so this could explain why he put the Stars of David on there. And the fact is, in this area in Savannah, it stated that this was a major Jewish area, so this could be a good example to why he designed this flag. However, as I said, this looks near identical to the Union flag also, which is probably why it wasn't used. But as I said, different groups, different corps used different variations of flags. Sometimes these were used as regiment flags, from what I'm told. Then there was also his uh, second variant flag proposal, which was actually this design, which kind of looks a little bit better. As well, there was also the flag proposal submitted by a Ladies of Charleston, which was, well, from Charleston, which they designed this design, which was pretty cool. Of which we see stripes on the top and stripes on the bottom, which this stands for the uh, integrity and as well also the blood that would be shed for the people's liberty. So, yeah. Uh, then there's also a LP Hunter from uh, Charleston, who, South Carolina, who also designed this near identical Union flag, which is probably why it was never used. And as well, LP Honors also later created the second variant, which was this, whatever god monstrosity this was. I really can't understand what that looks like. I, I have no idea. But I can, but that literally, that looks too much like a Union flag, so this is probably why they stopped using it. Or never used it entirely. Then there was actually this one from Alabama, and Apparently, this design was actually off of the inspiration of South Carolina seceding from the Union. And we see the snake design on there stating the fact of don't tread on me. So, in fact, they're putting that on there stating that South Carolina was the first state to leave the Union. So, they get the highest honor of this. And the fact is, because one, we see the moon, we also see the stars of how many states left the Union. So this is, uh, because we see only see seven, which is based off of the first seven states that left the Union. So this is a good example. Then there was actually this design flag, which is actually just seven stars. In which, this would later influence the Confederate battle flag. So, yeah, this design would be used only a little later on. Uh, then there was actually the, uh, John James design, which... Literally, this looks like uh, a lot of them just cook from Union flags, so this could be a good example to it. Uh, then as well, a J.M. Jennings, actually create from uh, Lodeburg, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, uh, Alabama, who actually created this design, which is also of a Hebrew descent design. Because look, there's the Hebrew design of the said Star David in there, so that's a good example to it. So why do these designs, well, this is actually to represent, how many people actually wonder, so wonder, what about the stripes? That represents the states that left the Union. So, yeah. Uh, but then there is also Samuel White's flag proposal, which is another of design off of South Carolina's, well, push for independence. As we see, it looks like a Union Jack, uh, American flag and such. However, with a circle, a blue circle with seven white stars to represent the said states that left the Union, the same with the said seven stripes. Then there's also the said moon to represent off of South Carolina. Now, the reason why many of these look like American flags is because, one, they took inspiration from the said American Revolution, which is a good example to it. Then there's also this weird flag proposal, which just looks like an American flag, only the stripes have been changed, which kind of looks a little good. And the thing is, I think this is when mo uh, another ele like 11 states were now seceded from the Union, so this is why the stars are in there a lot more. So, yeah. And the fact is, this could actually have been probably used in the major battlefields. From what I'm here told, it's actually from Louisville, Kentucky. 
So it might have actually been used in the entire war only as a regiment flag. Then there is actually... Whatever the hell this is! I don't know what this is, but this was a weird flag proposal. I think this was actually uh, meant for the Confederate Congress, apparently, because literally this was pushed for the Confederate Congress, but it didn't get uh, pushed in head long enough. So, yeah. Because this was only one of three. The second that was pushed by the Confederate Congress was this design, which was kind of good, actually, but it's based off of the Confederate flag, and it actually has, uh, I want to say, let's see, uh, yeah, seven st seven stripes and seven stars representing off of the first states that left the said Union. Then there is this third design, which was weird to say the least. Um, I don't know how, because when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking this might be copied from uh, a Louis Louisiana flag, because this might have been copied from the Louisiana flag, because this look of how near identical it is to Louisiana. So yeah, uh, honestly, it just looks so weird to me, I don't know why. But this one came from Caseville, uh, uh, Georgia, so it might have been used in a division or a regiment or whatever. Then there was also the Confederate flag proposal by, uh, uh, from I think it was Tennessee, which was be this. Which was a good design also in my, I guess you could say. But not my top favorite. I don't know why. I, I, it's just looking at it, it's not my cup of tea. Then there's also this weird flag proposal, which also does look like, well, that of the Louisiana flag. So, yeah, the Louisiana, the Louisiana independence flag kind of took off and created other variants of flags, especially from this one from Louisiana. So, yeah, this could be a good exploration to it. Then there was also be this design, which honestly, this one was a little weird. People actually wonder what the hell this, why there's an S in there. I think to say this stands for the South or South Carolina, or it just stands for secession, which that's my best thought, because one, the S probably stands for secession from the Union. And the fact is, it only shows six states when it should show seven, which I think... So, yeah, this was actually pr proposed by a South Carolina spokesman, so, yeah. Uh, but then there was this weird flag proposal uh, from the Hamilton Corps. Uh, this flag, I don't know why, this looks like a Union Jack to me, only with uh, stripes on it. So, this was kind of weird. I think this is why it wasn't used. Uh, but then there was also a Confederate national flag like this, which was from some guy, from a spokesman from Alabama, which I kind of like it. I kind of don't like it, but I think this was later used in a, one of their regiments, I think. However, then there was actually this weird flag proposal, which this, I believe, was actually created by, uh, hang on, I know this, by William T. Riddle, I believe. Uh, from Alabama, and the fact is, I think he actually got inspired by his co like coat of arms or something like that, so he wanted to put like a coat of arms for the Confederacy, so I guess that's a coat of arms of the Confederacy, uh, but I don't think they ever used this in battle, so that's a good example to it, but yeah. Okay, now let's go into flag variants. Now, what are flag variants? Well, flag variants are the different type of flags that were used by regiments, divisions, and so on, and which have actually been used in history. Such as this one, the bunny blue flag I was telling you about. This was actually originally from, I believe, Florida, I believe, in which apparently this was an independent area in Florida for a while until they became full part of Florida. So, yeah, I guess this is a Florida flag. However, it is also been used by Texas a lot. So, uh, yeah, this is why I always got this one confused. Because, one, I always get the, this one and the Texas flag confused. Because, uh, one, Texas flag, the fl Texas bunny blue is a lighter blue compared to the Somali flag, which is a really, really light blue. So, yeah, there are different flag designs, and they are accidentally mistaken for it over time. In fact, it'd be kind of like, for example, us mistaking the Texas flag for the Chile flag. 
Yeah, it's weird, I know. Uh, but then there is the Van Dorn flag, which this battle flag was actually used in the Western theaters, probably by the said South Carolinians, since it was had, we see a moon and we see the number of stars that were even used. So this was a South Carolinian battle flag. So this is our good example to how we can understand it. Then there is actually this flag, the flag of Northern Virginia, in other words, Robert E. Lee. Yes, this was the national flag of the said Confederate Army for a short while. In fact, only, but however, this is only used for Confederate headquarters. This was never used on the battlefield, so I want to put that out there. Why was it designed like this weird shape? Simple! This was actually meant to state the design of headquarters design. Now, in other words, we see, well, what looks to be a, lo a house, for example. Now, people say, I don't see that. Well, here's the thing. you got to put the imagination into it. In fact, this is of a southern bell design, so you got to understand why. Uh, but then there's also the seven-star design that was actually used by the said Confederate Marine Corps, which this is a Confederate Marine uh, flag, which this is actually kind of cool, actually. I'm going to put that out there. Uh, but then there was also this design of flag, which I do actually love. This was actually used by the 1st Army Corps of Tennessee, and which is a cross with Confederate stars. Now, when people see this, they automatically think it's a Christian flag. It sort of. And honestly, people, when they look at this flag, they don't think it's a Confederate battle flag. I, I actually find this hilarious that people don't realize this, that it's a Confederate flag. It's funny as hell. Uh, but then there are actually two Native American design flags, such as one that were actually used by the first Cherokee Mounted Rifles, that, well, which was this design. Then there was actually one by the first Choctaw War Regiment, which was this design. So why did they use this designs? Well, simple. They wanted to stand out from another Native American tribe and not accidentally be uh, confused by everyone else. However, these are the only two Native American battle flags we have ever seen used by the said Native American forces. Otherwise, they would have Janelle Desta worn Confederate clothing. Uh, but yeah. Then there was actually this design that was used by the 1st Regiment of Alabama, which was actually used, I think, in the, uh, first, which was actually the first battle flag of the said, uh, Parrot Guards. And this is actually really cool, because like, this one was actually used, uh, Pretty much from September of 1860 to 1861 of the summer. So, why'd they get rid of this? Kind of obvious. It nearly got mistaken for another state flag, or uh, I think Louisiana almost. So that's probably why. Uh, but then there was actually this weird flag design. It was actually used by the Biderman, uh, Biderman flag, as it was nicknamed. And it was actually the only uh, Confederate flag that was actually captured in California. That's right. This Confederate flag was actually captured in California. And I think it was San Francisco, I think. Yeah, yeah I think it was San Francisco. Now, why did the Confederacy have a battle flag like this in California? Simple. California was in a major civil war on its own. And the fact is, I'll have to talk about that some other time, but it was a really messed up slaughter fest for the Union over there. Next, we can also go to this weird flag, which is, which I called the Red Bonnie Boo flag, but apparently it's called the uh, Syllabi flag, which was the battle flag used by the Army of New Mexico. That's right, the New Mexico Territory had its own army, mainly mixed of uh, Hispanics, Native Americans, Blacks, you name it, and as well, Texans. So, yeah, this design was used by them. So, this flag was used as the battle flag for their military forces. Next, we go to a weird French-inspired one used by South Carolina. And it was actually designed by a Dr. H.P. Capers in 1861. However, I think the Confederacy didn't use this for one major reason. One, it looks like a French flag. And, so the major fact is, in this time in history, you don't want to accidentally have your own flag look like another person's flag. Especially to the fact, uh, European powers wanted to stay out of the war. Which is probably why this flag wasn't adopted. 
Then there would also be this flag used by the Confederates at the Vicksburg Campaign, which, well, was a cross stating that God is on the side of the South, meaning that whose ever flag has a cross on it actually stated that, it's, well, God actually chooses them, which many people actually believe this for a very long time, actually, with the South, especially with the battle flag. In fact, still to this day, some people even believe that the cross on a flag gives hope. It gives meaning. And the fact is, uh, many people don't realize that there were variant amounts of Confederate battle flags throughout history. Sadly, though, a lot of them we don't have today because some people don't like the symbol. But, yeah, I, though I always find this a little hilarious when Mississippi apparently nearly adopted its old Confederate flag back in, this, back in the service, which I wish it did, because then that would be both funny and, and as well, a big sense of humor on the said crybabies of said snowflakes that cried about a flag. But, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, now many people do want to ask, though, but Templar... Why was why did the Confederates design the flag the way it does? Why did they, well, design it in a type of form of well looks like uh, the St. Andrew's Cross? Well, simple. Uh, they wanted a design that of which could accidentally not be mistaken for the said Union battle flag. Uh, which many people don't realize this, but here's the thing: if you're on the major battlefields of major Civil War conflicts, you don't want to have a flag that looks like your enemy's flag. In fact, it'd be kind of like, well, uh, using a flag that's, uh, well, it's be kind of like, for example, us having a flag, like, well, with, uh, oh, what's, a, what's a good example? It's like, a, it's like, a, it's like, a, uh, what's a good example? I know, I know a country that has a flag that looks exactly the same, but I just can't think of it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, it'd be kind of like, say, for example, New Zealand and Australia went to war against each other, and the only difference is the stars. Because look, look at those two. Those look near identical, damn it, and those can accidentally get you confused on the major battlefield. So that was the major reason. So the Confederacy switched their designs from their original national flag to the said, well, Confederate cross design flag, and the fact is, they were variant designs over time. Some of which actually had the well major cross like we see with Tennessee on it. And the fact is, the reason to that is what well, later on we even see that with uh, a uh, I think it was a palm tree and the said moon. But there are different variants over time. In fact, I'll leave a link if I can down below in the description if any of y'all want to. Uh, see a video on the many flags on the Confederacy, only in animated form, but uh, pretty much it's just a bunch of music with the flags waving in the air, which is kind of cool, actually. Uh, but as well, I'll leave the so uh, one on the bunny blue flag, which I just stated. And now, many people don't realize, though, is the fact that these flags were used for such a long time in the major Confederate battlefields, and even long after, and even long before the Civil War. And the fact is, many people don't realize that these many of these flags aren't even uh, <laughs> state flags or anything like that. Many people accidentally mistake these for just well, some sort of trans, uh, a some sort of fad flag or some sort of uh, uh, symbol or whatever to some group. Well, you'd be half right. But the thing is, flags give a good description on what they are meant to be for. And the fact is. Many people don't realize is that some of those weird variants I talked about were actually Confederate flags, which I find hilarious to this day. I really do find this a funny as hell. So, yeah. But anyways, if any of y'all have any other Civil War ideas, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy to get talk about it immediately. And as what I might have to put another view, uh, voting up probably soon. Maybe even covered the Eastern Theater, the Central Theater, maybe the Western Theater, or as well, something like that. But then let me know down your, if whichever one you want to hear about, and let me know whatever parts of history in the American Civil War you want me to talk about. I'll, le I'll be happy to, well, uh, do a video on them soon. Anyways, guys, it's been Celtic Templar. Hope to see y'all in the next one, and make sure to fly those Confederate battle flags. Have a great day.